Ponga wife, can he start dueling people like we've seen him do in the LJL? But the bands are already done here. Rumble Nautilus LeBlanc there, banned out by Detonation. Focus Me and KLG, the Chaos Latin game is going with Callista, Hecarim, and Graga. So a lot of these top champions have been taken away. And as a result, Shavana is the first pick and instantly swaps over to the Teleport Smite. And without hesitation, KLG going to go for Sivir and Sedwani. Yeah, exactly right. So locking in a lot of champions straight away there. And Sivir Sejuani, that's interesting because Zekro is just, I guess, throwing away a lot of his own personal play style. He does play a little bit of Sivir coming through here. Normally is a little bit more of a lane bully though on things like Lucian Graves to just go more team focus. And I think that if anyone can get a fight started without a Sivir there, it's going to be the Sejuani. So maybe a little bit of overkill coming through for KLG. Quite possibly as Detonation Focus Me do take away Rek'Sai Jana. They're picking so quickly here, really keying in on what team composition they want. Zykro, to be fair, does have a win on the Sivir earlier today. and We're still playing aggressively, so it's more a matter of KLG. If they can get ahead, they look like the team that will just bash down their opponents. Yeah, exactly right. And you know, the thing about Sivir is that we say that she's an ultimate bot, but she does so much AoE damage if she is left unchecked in team fight. It really is her range that gates her, so we'll see exactly whether Zyko can make that one work again. Scion Thresh are the picks to come through next for Chaos Latin Gamers, and holy heck, that is a heavy initiation team. Yeah, I mean, we've actually seen this a little bit from the Chiefs earlier in the tournament, so, you know, the Civil Science, another big one. Sejuani in there as well for even more engaged, and the Thresh to help peel with the box, with the Flay, and even with the Descenders for picks as well. So, Detonation Focus Me, take a bit of a step back, heavy breath now as well, because they're kind of like, all right, we picked all these champions, and then wait. That's so much engaged coming through, but the vein has been locked in for you to pump. And this is what we have been waiting for, for a duelist to come through from the Japanese AD carry star. And he actually does really well against Siva, able to dodge out of the way of the lot of the boomerangs, has a clear item pathing to go for that 1v1 build. And you know what? If they're just gonna go all out team fight, Go for some wave clear in your mid laner that picked up Corky and then just let Utapon split push all game long. Yeah, got a bit more mid game power now as well. That should be mid lane Corky coming through for Detonation Focus Me. And Ceres has been looking good all tournament despite the team not yet picking up any wins. So I love the draft here from the Japanese side. KLG though, considering their options, they need a nice, good, preferably higher damage mid laner to tie the room together. And maybe even Vladimir, we've seen a lot of him today already. Yeah, I definitely agree with the Vladimir coming through through here, it would just make sense. Be able to amplify all the high base damages that's gonna come through from Sejuani, from the uh, Scion in the top lane. So it just, you know what? You talk about tying the room together, all of a sudden there is AOE for days coming out of this Yeah, that's squad. exactly what they take. They do pick up the Vladimir for themselves for that mid lane. And you mentioned Sivir's big AOE damage spawn. Suddenly they've got a nice big combo with it. Yeah, exactly right. They've got the Sivir AOE. They've also got Sejuani's AOE that late game you cannot underestimate. Not to mention the fact that Sion, every single thing in his kit hits multiple people if you line it up correctly. That's a really strong lineup coming through here. They scale extremely well as the game goes on, but also have kind of that ability to jump on fights in the mid game with a Sivir as well as a Thresh that might just be able to get them enough picks to get there. there. Well, honestly, I like both drafts here a lot as well. I like that Detonation Focus Me put a more early game uh, champion in the mid lane. Didn't go all in for the scaling with the Vayne and Shivana. There are a lot of good options here. Again, Utapon, this is a good time for him to really shine as the star AD carry player. And I believe the MVP of the domestic league for him as well. This is going to be a great game between these two teams. Japan going to look for their first win and KLG going to look to ride on earlier success. Yeah, exactly right. So we have to see who gets their gameplay. I think that if they group up early enough, KLG can force here. But really, it's all about how well Siros can control the waves and Astator and Kazu can stop him from getting dove because they will be running 1-3-1. Mark my words, if you have a Shyvana and a Vayne on the same team, there is no way that they will bump heads together until like 25, 30 minutes in. They're both very farm-hungry champions and actually push waves relatively well if you go that static shift second item. So I think that there is success here if they can split up the KLG lineup. Yeah, and that's the Utapon style. Start getting your Blade of Ruin King, duel anybody that comes towards you and just let the rest of your team move move around the map and do whatever they need to do. Yeah, exactly right. And, you know, if they are able to get those things happening, if they can split this lineup up and then all of a sudden it becomes very hard to dive a Jana 
in the middle of a, a lane. Not to mention the fact that Rexai has a knock-up. These are things that they can use to their advantage to really keep them away from the turrets. Yeah, we do have a pause to start the game, unfortunately, but shouldn't be too long here as we're going to move through a bit more about the game coming through. I guess my big question for you, Spawn, Vayne, we don't see her too often, and I guess there's a good reason. She seems great against a lot of the tanks that populate 5.6, and these are actually the results for the day. So we'll get back to Vayne in a second, but as you can see, six of the eight games played through today, and the results have been nothing short of surprising. Yeah, they certainly haven't. And, you know, Besiktas and the Chiefs are the two ones for me that are just completely bonkers. Those guys being knocked off by hard random is just really surprising. And Ince also taking down Bangkok Titans, of course. That was the first loss that came through for the Sia team and just impressive play through from Ince all day. Yeah, the Brazilians actually on pace for three straight games in a row today to push up the record with, I believe, is 1-1 one, one yesterday. So lots of potential there to move through as we see the current standings as we go into this match as well. Ince and Bangkok Titans all of a sudden right on top. Yeah, exactly right. And all of a sudden, hard random from the bottom of the standings is 3-2. And these guys are a legitimate chance to be able to go through. Yeah, but Shiktas there as well at 2-3. and three. Not the result we expected from the hometown team here. And I guess the other thing is as well, they can... Uh, the, like, again, everything we saw with the interviews and stuff, people are always singling out the Turkish team and being like, we're afraid of these guys. And unfortunately, they've just not had their day. Yeah, exactly right. Remember, every single team plays seven games, so the best that they can do... Uh, six games, the best that they can do coming through here is 3-3 three, three and... I don't know if that's going to be enough to get it done. I mean, you have to. It's hard to say here. Three wins already for some of the teams that have only picked up one loss at the very top of the table. Oceanics, the, Oceani is the Chiefs sitting in that fourth place right now, but do need to pick up a few more wins. It's a very messy table all of a sudden, very chaotic towards the top four cutoff slots as well. So again, it's been another crazy day at IWCI and all of a sudden it feels like we took the table from yesterday and just kind of did this with it. Went full Australia and turned it upside down. Yeah, exactly right. It kind of seems that we did that. And, you know, as we said, Brazil as well as, uh, sorry, CR are sitting at the top of the table. They're the guys that will most likely go through, but it's the other two spots that are really up for grabs right now. And CIS have made a good case for it. I don't know whether, like, it looks at the moment that either Oceania or Turkey aren't going to make it into that playoff. And that's crazy to think, especially for the hometown side there in Turkey. But we are into this game now, of course. Japan versus Latin America. Detonation Focus Me versus Chaos Latin Gamers. And a big game for both these teams once again. Yeah, it certainly is. So we see them streaming onto the rift. Chaos Latin Gamers grouping up trying to repel a potential invade that will come through. We have to see whether they can catch anyone out. Of course, Sion, if you face check him, that's real dangerous. Yeah, don't face check the Sion. Does a lot of damage. Has good CC coming through there as well. But as we can see, it's just pretty spread out defensively here in the early stages of the game. And I was going to ask you about the vein and should we expect a lane swap here? But already the dual lane for the Japanese side is in the top lane. Yeah, and straight away they think we have... Uh, uh, they have a vein. They're going to invade the top side of our map to get Deep Ward. So what do KLG do? Very smart. They stack up. Now they're sending their duo lane back to go into the bottom lane. So it looks like they will be able to get the lane swap with Vayne. Vayne Jana, very good late game lane. But it just should never be run into a 2v2. Just cannot stand up to a lot of the bullying pressure that comes through. And as we do have another pause here, it looks like we didn't quite figure out what's going on there, but should be back fairly soon. I mean, it's funny when we see these sort of swaps to me because at this point, you're just effectively flipping a coin and hoping that you get the swap. Yeah, exactly right. You kind of just go back and you think, which lane would I go to if I was an AD carry and then try and replicate that train of thought. Unfortunately, this time around, it looks like it probably won't have worked, but... I completely agree with you. Without any vision, you're just doing whatever it takes to get away. And you know, I think if you want the lane swap and you're just kind of taking a gamble and flipping a coin, I think you do just go to the top lane. And if you end up in the 2v2, all right, whatever. Like, that's where you were going to end up anyway if you went to the bottom side. So I do like it here. It seems like Detonation Focus Me wants to get the early lane uh, getting started well for Vayne. Because especially if they do want to even move their support out and maybe look for some rooms as well, you have to think that a player like Udipon totally fine in a 1v1 matchup. Yeah, exactly right. Udipon would actually probably prefer the solo experience coming through there. So get Kazu out into the other lanes and see what you can do. 
Um, I think the other thing is that Vayne has earlier back time. Is you can go back with 1,200 gold and just pick up the Vamp Scepter and Longsword and you don't really care that you didn't hit that 1,500 mark. Unlike Siva, who if you go back with an awkward amount of gold, you kind of have to pick up components like Pickaxe Boots or something like that because she will go for the uh, Infinity Edge most likely in the first... Uh, major item that she wants to pick up. So I think that Udipon, even if he ends up in a 2v2, will just try and get enough gold to scrape together the components and then look for the lane swap afterwards. Because I really do think that Vayne won't want to be shoved in continually by a Sivir. Yeah, no, that matchup just doesn't sound fun at all. I mean, Gina can't really help you. Very defensive duo if they do stick together. So, you know, it's just kind of play back to your turret. Hope to maybe freeze the wave towards it and then Get some farm. That's kind of all you can do, Vayne. Classically, pretty weak in lane. Yeah, exactly right. Really weak in lane, but then you get the Blade of the Ruin King and Boots too, and the lane matchup turns around because Siva, if anything, is known to overextend for farm because she pushes the wave so quickly. So Vayne, she just camps out in some brushes, looks to 1v1. She really turns into that duelist mentality, almost becomes like a top laner. Yeah. Esque in the mid game because all she's looking for is to get some more farm and continue to fight people and you know that's exactly what Udipon style is so now it's up to um, Zekaro to see if he can dodge that out in the mid game. Yeah I mean if they can find the lane especially just get into the 2v2 start shoving things out and then Vayne again if Udipon falls behind and we've seen what happens at the tournament here when he does fall behind it's just too hard you need big like item thresholds coming through with an AD carry even on Urgot which he fell quite behind on and has maybe lower item thresholds than other AD carries like your star player can't help carry a really hard carry when he's just starved of resources in yeah, the game. Yeah, exactly right. I was l watching that Ergo uh, game and just thinking, he's really struggling killing this creep wave. Then you check the gold and he's something like three and a half thousand behind. So you're just not going to ever be in a position to, for success from there. So I definitely agree with you that that is one of the keys to unlock you upon this game. But when you look down the KLG lineup, they just scream team fight, and they have a really good force coming through there. Sejuani Ultimate is kind of like a Gragas Barrel, whereas if they're sitting on turrets, you can just throw it at them, and all of a sudden, everyone has to duck and cover. So I definitely think that there are ways for KLG to force the pace here and not let the Shyvana and Vayne get to super late game. I mean, again, when KLG have looked good in the victory earlier today, it was when they got ahead and just snowballed the game completely out of control away from hard random. So I agree, that's absolutely how they want to play, but kind to go through a couple of our other matchups as we do still have a pause going on. Corky Mid, we've seen him quite a lot, but what is it that draws people to this sort of pick? Yeah, so Corky Mid's weird because he has a really smooth item threshold for an AD carry, so that's why he fits into the mid lane. You think of all the other mid laners and you think Morel and Omicom boots they're kind of finding. Corky with the Trinity Force, although it's a little bit more uh, expensive, is also kind of like that because he gets to his one big item and he suddenly starts taking over mid games. He also does a lot of magic damage, which means that he's fairly safe to put in the mid lane and has some terrific poke so he's kind of like a pseudo poke really good skirmisher great in 2v2 3v3 those kinds of things in the mid game so that's just why corky mid makes a lot of sense i would be interested to see what build comes out after there if it is something like a blade of the ruin king for some tank busting then it's not really anything different coming through from Cyrus. if it's something like insanely crazy like a Luden's Echo Leandri Torment then we'll have to revisit exactly what he's hoping to accomplish with that matchup but that's more about chunking people out with your big one making sure that you have the poke damage to force people off turrets yeah I mean and Vlad I guess on the other side there for KLG the mid laner we've seen so much of already in this tournament really just take over despite the fact that Vlad Kind of a fairly weak laner in the early levels. Yeah, exactly right. So he doesn't do great things in the early levels. Has some strange matchups. Pretty much he just wants to push out with Tides of Blood level 1, try and get level 2, and then just shove the lane. The longer you can make the lane opponent con uh, concentrate on CS as opposed to hitting you, the better off the lane is for Vladimir. He's all about just getting ahead in farm. And, you know... We saw it out of Swiffer. We've seen it out of uh, a couple of players today that you can just uh, roam around the map and just take all the CS possible, and it probably couldn't go on a better carry. Vlad scales exponentially well with the double dipping into HP and AP into the late game, and as soon as he gets any form of 3-4 item build, his core is so strong 
that that hemo plague just does work. Yeah, and we've talked about again the AOE that they can layer through there as well with the Sivir. I mean, Sivir again, not the hardest of carries late game despite her decent damage, mainly just because of range, which you mentioned already. But Vlad just sort of turns anyone into a big carry, it feels like. And we've already seen a lot of Gragas Hecarim bands. You have to think Vlad might be the third champion on that list. Yeah, he certainly seems like he's getting up there. He needs some CC out of the jungle. That's why we don't see a lot of Vlad because all of a sudden, if you're running him in the top or mid lane, Top lane, he overextends a lot. Mid lane, he just doesn't have the CC that a normal mid laner expect. You expect, like, charms, chains, the pick abilities at least to come out of your mid laner to make them viable. And that's why he's so popular right now, because we're seeing junglers like Gragas, like Sejuani, even the Zac, things like this that have multiple forms of CC in their kit just means that Vladimir, all of a sudden, very viable is just a pure damage threat. Yeah, and he's been an absolute house today as well. In fact, Hard Random, the team that already uh, lost actually to KLG earlier this morning, they're the team that just have been taking over the Vlad. Kira's been picking it into almost everything and just running over people, even if he gets behind. Like you said, just gets up on scales and all of a sudden, he arrives at a team fight with three, four items and everyone's dead. Yeah, and you saw that. We're running over equalizers. Kira was just dumping the Hemo Plague on like four people, getting one round of spells off, getting back out and getting maybe another Tides of Blood across everyone. And then like Hemo Plague pops and you go, wow, that was like the whole team just took all their health. Because when you get to that point on Vladimir, the game's probably already, like, half done. Like, y your team has to do very little to supplement exactly what he's doing. It's just get him onto the back line, and he'll do the rest himself. Really is about shutting him down early, and that's why the Corky pick, even though Vlad was picked afterwards, also makes a little bit of sense. Because maybe you can zone him, doesn't have a fantastic auto attack coming through there, Vladimir. Potentially, Corky can shove him off the wave early, force him back, and try and get him uncomfortable. Yeah, we'll have to see if Sarah can do it. Again, been impressed with his landing so far in the tournament. But moving to the top lane now, we do still have the pause going on. Shivana finally seeing play. We've seen so many Hecarim bands and Smite Teleport be fairly popular. You'd have to think that Shivana was only just around the corner. Yeah, exactly right. And it's weird because whereas Hecarim is more of the team fighting Smite Teleport, Shivana very much split pushing. And we've come so far, Pastry Time, but we're still in Season 2, apparently, because all you do is you take Shivana into the top lane and then you run to their Krugs or their Gromp, which w Gromp didn't even exist when this tactic first started. You used to run to their Wolves, and then it's you just buffed. take their Wolf Camp down. Yeah, the strat's been buffed. And all of a sudden, you just have this insane champion because you do the true damage off the Gromp if you smite it before a fight, then you have all this mixed damage coming through. Your burnout, your flame breath, all those good parts of your kit are doing magic damage. Then you are slapping people and you're doing physical damage and you run super quick and all of a sudden you have like these double resistance because her ultimate is probably one of the strongest ultimates in the game. And the fact that it's passive is just as good as it's active coming through there. And... She is just ridiculously good at split pushing being mobile around the map. So if anyone was going to catch up to Hecarim in popularity. It was definitely going to be Shivana. And now we're, de uh, we're going to see a game where she will be released onto the Rift against a Scion. And Scion, you know, as much as people like to say he's a lane bully, more so in the 2v1, in a 1v1 against a Shivana, there is no way he's going to be able to stand up. Shivana is an extremely potent laner. Yeah, she's just very strong. Very hard to move out of lane. People, uh, like you said, say Scion's the hard one to get out of the top side, but Shivana, really good. And we'll have to see how they do uh, in the top side. It's our first performance, I believe, today in the IWCI. So curious to see how that goes. I guess my only worry, sort of looking through the comp for detonation, focus me, possibly a lack of CC. They can get Shivana in. Rek'Sai's not bad if she gets under people and can unborrow and just be disruptive, but it's just a lot of damage after that. Jana, Corky, Vayne, 280 carry threats, and hopefully it's one of them split pushing. Yeah, exactly right. That's what it's all about. If they get to the point where they're uh, team uh, fighting, like 5v5, then that's going to be not good because that means that their composition's already fallen apart. So yes, there is a lack of CC, but it shouldn't matter because it should be them trying to split up the mat and then catching the stragglers out, picking them off, pulling the team comp apart that has been put together by KLG. Because KLG, they're a unit. And then you can actually see from their team comp that it is a one-man unit in the top lane, Shivana, three men in the mid lane trying to clear waves and force people to not turret dive, then a one-man unit in the bottom lane in the vein. So they definitely have gone for extremely polar opposites, and we'll see which strategy makes a lot more sense as the team game rolls out. Yeah, I love Jana in those sort of compositions as well, because there's no one better if you're running three people exactly in a unit, just kind of running around the map between lanes, trying to not get engaged on, basically. Then, of course, having the queen of disengaging Jana, but kind of 
I guess looking through the other things, I guess my other surprise into the tournament has actually been Sivo. She's been was very popular like many, many, many weeks ago, kind of at the start of the uh, 2015 season. And, you know, kind of at a big dip in the middle there. And all of a sudden, especially getting to uh, recent tournaments, this one no different. It's just been so much silver. But, again, these are the results for the day as well. We didn't quite touch on all of them, so let's make sure we get on them. And we already talked about Insta's run there. Hard Random also 2-0 with a game to play at the end of the day as well. Yeah, so Hard Random, they lost uh, against KLG. This is coming up. It's their last game of the tournament coming up against Insta. It's probably a must win to get them into the definitive spot. Yeah, so if they win this one, they're up. Uh, they're going to be 4-2 if they come up against Ince, and that will definitely secure them a position. So we'll see exactly how it uh, works out. If they go down to 3-3, then it's not going to be secure. They might have to go into a tiebreaker, see how the other teams finish up. Yeah, and I mean, you definitely don't want to be playing tiebreakers here. It's real rough if you have to play, especially in a round-robin tournament, if you have to play tiebreakers, because potentially, depending on how many teams get involved in that situation, there are lots of tiebreakers for you to play in. You have to play all of them here as well. It's not just enough to make the top four. If you're tied record-wise, you have to keep playing to make sure you get the proper seating in the top four as well. So long days coming up for these teams, potentially. Yeah, and that's all tomorrow as well. So we have the five games tomorrow and then the tiebreakers to round out the day. And yeah, there might not be any, but the other crazy thing about uh, best uh, getting teams down to four is that there could be like 10 as well, depending on how that seating works out. Yeah, you can very unfortunately go full EULCS and have just a circle of tiebreakers going around and around, but hopefully that won't happen again for a lot of these teams. Don't want that to happen at all, just because, again, you want to clinch your spot, take your seat, and just go home and prepare for your next match coming up, because playoffs are going to be brutal as well. For, a, what, I think, a five-day tournament off the top of my head, it's a pretty grueling tournament. Yeah, there certainly is, and you know that you have the best of fives coming up after that, and that's even more League of Legends to play. The other thing about tiebreak is it becomes do or dive and you have to start using your playoff strategies pretty much a day early, which no one wants to yeah, do. Yeah, don't want to show those strategies off here as well. Almost back into the game as well. I believe we have unpaused. And again, a big match here between the two teams. We'll get back into it a minute 30 in. Detonation, Focus Me versus Chaos Latin Gamers. If you are just joining or rejoining mentally there after the pause. And again, we see the vein in the top side, but KLG have sniffed it out like you mentioned, Spawn. And they're up in the top as well. Yeah, so they sent their duo back and then ran back to the top lane. So maybe just good intuition coming through from KLG, but they've been able to get the 2v2. They won't show in lane early. They're going to start off the Krug. So that means that Kazu and Unipon will definitely be running into that. Yeah, I mean, at this point, nobody can leave. So we'll just have our standard matchups, but chuck the duos in the top lane instead of the bottom side here. But Seras versus Reggie is our mid lane matchup here. And the Corky we expect, especially for Seras, to probably get ahead early here. Yeah, you certainly hope you get ahead early. Otherwise, there's not really much point in picking that out. You see, he's actually gone Flask. And has a heck of a lot of potions in here. So going to be recklessly spamming those abilities to be able to force Reggie out of lane. Kind of unique that we're not seeing the Doran Blade start. I think so too. I mean, you do want to get your harass on Doran's a great early item for landing. I do understand the theory for Seras here. He's going to be able to be, as you said, pretty reckless with his mana usage here in trades. And I mean... It does make some sense against Vlad, who wants to trade health back and forth with you, but just in general, you're so strong in the matchup early on that I think you're right. Maybe just take the Doran's Blade. Yeah, and the other thing that's really thrown me through a loop as Seros takes an incidental tunnel shot, uh, turret shot is that Vlad hasn't gone with a shield, and you know that a Corky, he's going to be just throwing out auto attack harass all lane. Yeah, that's very... Greedy, selfish, something there by Reggie with the boots. I mean, boots are actually pretty good against the Phosphorus Bomb, but apart from that, you are going to struggle when you start taking those auto attacks. And the thing is, right, is that there is three auto attackers on the opposition. Four if you count Rek'Sai, who has that beautiful auto attack animation cancel on her Q. You've got Shivana that's going to auto, -take, uh, auto attack. You've got Vayne as well as Corky as Astator in the top lane. Misses out on a gank, steps on a ward. He's going to have to go back into his jungle. I mean, I like the pressure, though, coming through Vayne, keeping up nicely in CS early on, but I think the detonation focus me know that the one person they really need to get ahead is Udipon's Vayne. Yeah, it certainly is. And you see already the return gank coming up here. Actually just taking out the Scuttle Crab for some nice early golden experience. And you see how much more healthy 
the Rek'Sai is, than the Sejuani in the early jungle. We harp on it, but a lot of these tank junglers, they do fall a little bit behind, even though Julio Stito took an extra camp. Yeah, uh, Sejuani especially gets so low on her first clear, but once you get through it, things tend to get quite a bit better for you, but Rek'Sai and Steg wanted to go for some top lane pressure and help out the AD carry, and as you see, popping back into the mid side, Roji a little bit behind on CS, but not doing too badly in the early stages. Yeah, certainly isn't doing too bad at all. He's actually very healthy in the lane, so Siros, he needs to start getting some work done because at about level 7 this lane going to swap on its head as Reggie has some more points into that Hemo play. Uh, so the transfusion coming through on the Q as well as his ultimate available. So yeah. And I think the biggest thing for me kind of moving down in the early stages of the game is Sion is somehow massively far ahead of Shivana already. Yeah, and this is kind of weird because Shivana, what she does to people is she just ignores creeps, pushes them in, but she's the one CSE under a turret. As I think we have some action in the top lane. Bear very low. Yeah, really low here. Actually do want the kill, but Kazoo can't quite chase him for it enough. Yudapon does get out of the way of the boomerang blade, but now Kazu in trouble. Hook just short there, unfortunately, for the Thresh, and a massive 2v2 on the top side, but no kills yet. Yeah, and this is the danger about getting harassed down onto supports, as Astator's here as well. Beautiful timing here coming through. Bear now going to be in trouble. The Praise Digger comes through, but a good flash on Borrow. Going to get the knockup. First block going to go in. Jardim with the Tornado, and Yudapon wants it and gets it. Yeah, so able to get a kill over onto the AD and that is awesome news. If you can get a losing lane ahead, something like a vein, and that's already a thousand gold advantage because of the couple of kills. That's going to mean nothing but good things. Accelerates the split push. That's already a cutlass if Vayne goes back now. Yeah, you can see the jungler really prioritizing ganking for this AD carry, but why not here with it when it's your star player playing a champion like Vayne who can really take over when she's allowed to? And there's the cutlass that you talked about. Yeah, so able to pick up the cutlass nice and early. And we take a look at Bonzen in this bottom lane. He's playing it very safely. Maybe worried that Julio Stito was around as we're going to have the lane swap come back through. But generally what you do on Shyvana is you just run at the creep wave and you just kill it with your W. And then even if people attack you and harass you down, they don't have enough damage to kill you. So you can just go back to lane as uh, base as much as you want because you run really quickly. You pick up boots early and you just keep running back to lane, farming up everything in sight. But... Hasn't gone that way so far, Scion. 14 CS advantage. You can see, though, the early items looking strong here on Detonation Focus Me side. We have a Cinder now done for Bonds, and Cinder and the Trailblazer there for Astorore. And I love the lane swap now as well. We mentioned the Cutlass and Scion might be able to stand up to the Shivana, but cannot stand up to Vayne. Yeah, so automatically goes back. We'll see whether Burns teleport to get into a different lane or whether it just comes back bot to try and deal with Utapon. But Astorore, he started up Dragon. Rek'Sai, very good at taking Dragon early game, can pop under in between the auto attacks to get some health back. Although not actually doing it, just completely face tanking this one, but still remains very healthy. Yeah, Kaza here as well for a couple of shields. Going to make it a very simple Dragon for Detonation. Focus me, they will take it away. And the early play, especially from the Japanese jungler, has been great so far. Yeah, it certainly has. They're going for a dive as well, trying to get Yudapon even further ahead. As you see, Helio, he's being forced into his turret. You can see good damage coming through. Now we'll push the wave in as well. Has to check, does suspect it. And the ward does go down, but they'll look for the dive a little early, unfortunately, in the level 6 Sion. They pretty hard to pin down. They're going in deep. The flash used already by Helio, but Unipon dances around it wonderfully. Now going to read over as Kazu taking up a few too many turrets. It's forced to flash there, but does get the kill, and it goes to Vayne once again. Yeah, and pushes the dead Sion away, which is huge news. In the mid lane, somehow, Reggie gets zoned out as well. He's extremely low, so... In the end, everything going right. Three members here, the beautiful knock up there through the flash, but Seros will get away. Sorry, that was the Valkyrie forcing the flash away after it, but Seros now getting aggressive into the blood, and look at that CS, he's wrestled back a lead. Yeah, he certainly has, able to take over with the Sheen. That's what it was taking, a little bit more poke damage, and you see the phosphorus bombs now, as well as the missiles doing work in this lane, so... Siros, he started off well. Utapon, he's performing well. Wow, that was a big one right there. And across the map, they're getting advantages. And you know the early flask that might have been a bit awkward for early game trading? Now looks wonderful with this quick sheen picked up. Yeah, it certainly does because all of a sudden he's all about the poke damage that will come through. So he's firing off the rockets, trying to get himself ahead through poke damage as we see. Three members around this mid lane. They're confident the veins ahead now. Got boots too, got cutlass. 
Maybe we'll see a little bit more roaming coming through from Kazu and trying to help other lanes. Yeah, I mean, that would be great. Again, Astorore's presence in the early stages has been wonderful. And for me, when we saw Detonation focus me early on in, earlier on in the tournament, I had to say the reactive play was very good. Is Julio Steedo going to get caught out there? Astorore on the wreck side, really giving it to the Latam jungler. Yes, certainly is in his face. This is what you have to do against these tank junglers. The bruisers were king for a reason. It's because early game, they just bully everyone. And in the end, they're still in there trying to fight. You see Udipon early. Berserker gives us knockout. Comes through onto Bear. Reggie going to join in here. But Kazu and Seros are also in as well. 3v3 right now just between the turrets. But Detonation, focus me. We'll back away from the fight. And you know what, Pastry Time? Real winner. That top laner all of a sudden from 14 CS down, 14 CS up. Bonzin is going absolutely crazy. He picked himself up that Grom camp. And all of a sudden... There is no way Zycro can force him off the way. No, great lane swap for multiple reasons by the Japanese side. And Yudapon in his element right now, even on CS against the Siva as Vayne in the lane swap. Cutlass done, Berserker Grieve's done now as well. And poor Sion, we already talked about Vayne kind of being a top laner. There's a reason she's sometimes C play top. She's excellent at bullying melee champions. Yeah, she certainly is. And it's all about those silver bolts coming through as we see the high mobility out of the tumble as well. That's what's being Max first. Going for a little bit of a different path there. Of course, we saw a lot of uh, Silver Bolts max, but utility, uh, sorry, movement is just so strong in the current patch that I'm not uh, surprised to see the Tumble Max coming back through. Also gives you very good burst trades. And you see in the top lane, Bonzen again, he's just back on that Grump. It's going to be repetitively taken. Hopefully he picks up the Krugs as well, because Glowy Fish Shavana is one of the best things to watch running around. It does look very awesome. Unfortunately, won't help too much in the lane, but Grump's certainly going to give a nice kick, despite the slight nerf in 5.7. But I agree, Glowy Hand Shavana all the way. Yeah, exactly right. We see Cyrus picking up his blue buff as well. So that lane got a heck of a lot worse now for Vladimir, who's only got a revolver and uh, another book. Ne Look to combine them, a gun and a book into a tome somehow very yeah, I, shortly. I'm not quite sure what happens. It's almost like the movies where you know they're hiding their revolvers in their Bibles or whatever. But whatever the case, will the ancients will be the item picked up once they combine them all together. But Reggie, despite being level 8, now with blue buff on the Corky as well, going to struggle in the matchup, especially when Corky goes back for the next time. Yeah, and all of a sudden, the strong lanes that we heard about out of the Japanese team are really apparent. 20 CS. You see that they're head-to-head -head for top lane. That's nearly 30 CS, 20 CS now that it's been equaled out with that lane being chunked down in the bottom. Only the vein behind, and you know you would expect that because he's got two kills. He spent lots of his time shopping, whereas this Siva, we talked about item pickup, had to go back, awkward item timings, had to go back and get that pickaxe as we see. Wow, Cyrus is just bullying Reggie now. Yeah, he's going in there on the court. Can actually a dive might be his Zacro in trouble. That's the Rory coming through. Bonson going to dive through. Uses the smite. Gets on top with the tornado for the knockup as well. Ignite is down. They just need to chase a little while longer. Going to dive the turret. Prey Seeker lands and Flash Auto on Burrow. Going to get the kill. And that is two creep waves that will crash into the turret as well. So denying a lot of farm but maybe the dive in return. Oh, Unipol, what can he do? He's 1v3 right now. Does get knocked up by the Sidwani and uses the ulti, but gets flayed back away. Bonzen going to try and save him. Condemns away. Flash in there as well. Helio can't find the knockup. Death sentence lands, so that will be a kill, but Helio going to get low here as well. Bonzen, though, getting chased down, gets picked up by Bear. Helio still alive. Pops the W there for a bit of a shield, and Astorore can't Corky. complete any kills, but Corky coming through. Gets one kill. Going to go in onto Bear. Going to maybe make it two, but the flash does come through there for Thresh, and Helio in the undead form will buy some time, and a massive trade in the bottom Side. So overall, two for one in favor of KLG, but you feel like this cha chaotic style of game is going to really suit the Japanese lineup. They seem to be in their element. Utapon bought a lot of time for the rest of his team to get there, and it's a 2,000 gold advantage already starting to build up. And we've heard tales in the domestic leagues for Detonation Focus Me of Utapon's crazy outplays in very precarious situations. That was almost the makings of one hell of a highlight reel. Yeah, it certainly was. And you know, you could see exactly what he was trying to accomplish. Maybe just a little bit of a misplay because of all the CC that was coming out. But you think with his uh, ability to go QSS second item, we've seen it on Callista. It makes a heck of a lot more sense on Vayne, if I'm honest. All of a sudden, that's even harder to pull off.
And we'll have to see what he goes for. But that play to the Ruin King, not too far away now for Yudapon's vein. And he's also getting some good experience as well. Level 13, you have to think a key level for the vein with the max tumble and the max silver bolts. And already at level 9, looking strong here. And again, even against the Siva, this land swap has worked out so well. Yeah, it certainly didn't. He's picking up every single bit of farm as well now underneath this turret. Misses out on one, but overall he can go back, finish up that Blade of the Ruin King. He's equal in CS. Won't be able to give up the minion wave because Siva just crushes minions so hard that she'll take the turret whenever he does. But whenever he gets that free back, expect him to be able to just go back, grab the Blade of the Ruin King. All of a sudden, he's in complete control. Yeah, you can see Kazu roaming down. Going to help clear out a ward there in the mid brush. Seros going back and got a Phage now, so building in towards that Trinity Force. But Dragon's the big one here. Astaroar is in the top side of the map, and Dragon's alive. And you can see on your mini-map, Sejuani already on top of it with the help of Thresh, and it goes down. Yeah, it goes down. Able to pick that one up. You see the Vladimir with the extra levels is starting to equalize the mid lane still 15 CS behind, but I don't expect that one to get much worse. In the top lane, they're concentrating on a uh, on taking down the turret. Sorry, that one will fall down. And across the map, even though they gave over the first dragon, they already had one for themselves. They just extended to 3,000 gold. Yeah, not a bad trade there at all. And the gold lead is growing, like you said, Seros. So going to fight Reggie and Corky all of a sudden. Level 10, Vladimir got the Will of the Ancients finished up now as well. Combine that gun in the book. And now Vladimir getting to that point where we've always seen him time and time again today. Just so hard to kick out at this stage. Yeah, exactly right. He's just immovable in that mid lane now because it's such a short lane. He crushes down the wave, goes, picks up a jungle camp generally, and he's able to get it. You saw that Yudapon, he went back. He did pick up his blade, but he did give up the turret at the same time. Now it looks like they're sending even more members into that bottom lane to try and deal with the vein because you don't want the minion wave to be frozen. Unipon had to pop the ultimate, and now they'll back away. Yeah, use that ulti to keep himself a bit safer, but we'll clear out the creeps as they hit into the turrets here. Gonna get most of them as well, but Vayne's still wanting to farm, and KLG have managed to get the bottom turret. You have to think they want to rotate around and take some more there as well, because if they can open up space here in the vein, doesn't have safe places to farm. Yudapong is still trying to scale up despite the fact that he's got his blade now. He's in the mid. We actually have a fight breaking out. Kazu with a good disengage ulti. Seros gonna get low from the Hemo Plague, but will not go down. Yeah, and this is what they need to do. Force him to group up all of a sudden. Yudapong has to come into the mid lane to try and defend this turret. Although Bonzin does some pretty good damage at this point, they force him away. Yeah, Shavana level 11 has the smite ready to go, has the ultimate as well. Yudapon actually arrived a little late, didn't need to be here as it turns out. Might just take the farm as it pushes in, but that was almost a big vein janitor performance, I think, brewing there for Detonation Focus Me. But as it is, both teams will go back, spend their gold and reset. Yeah, exactly right. So no kills, just a couple of ultimates utilized. Civil will push that wave back into the turret. You see Sork Boots have been built up and there is another Ruby Crystal coming through there. So if I am not mistaken, this will be a Leandri's Torment second item coming through for Syros. Maybe here that could be the haunting guys into the end. Just be curious to see if that's what he wants to go for. I have to imagine the Trinity Force will get finished first, although maybe not actually. Wouldn't be too bad just to have Fade Sheen and then the Sork Boots plus the guys. Yeah, the combination of the Trinity Force is a huge pickup for Corky, but maybe he will circumvent it. The only other thing that he could be going for is maybe some early magic resistance, but just not picking up a Null Magic Mantle doesn't make sense. That's why I think it is the Haunting guys coming through there, but we definitely will have to still wait and see. Well, Corky, again, you said that Trinity Force is usually a guarantee, and then after that, you kind of go off the deep end with mid lane Corky. So see how deep Seros wants to go, but Yudapon, you can see, sneaking into some brushes down the bottom. Not quite level 11 yet on the vein, but this is the style that he wants. Can he get the 1v1? He's going to line it up here on Siva and Zacro. That's too far forward. There's the ulti pop by Vayne. Going to go in. Oh, hits a creep. Not good news, but he's going to keep going through. The blade down as well. Will go in and gets an easy 1v1. Yeah, you can tell that he's a skirmisher because he counted abilities. This has been the always the thing about League of Legends. Everyone has threats in their kit, but he counted all three of the ricochets, came out, waited till the boomerang blade was thrown, that Q from Siva, realized all of a sudden, no burst damage. All she has left is auto attack trades. I'm vain, I'm going to win an auto attack trade. Let's go in and blew him up. Yeah, and this is exactly how Yudapon has carried so many games back home in Japan. So we'll see if we can continue the style here. Three, one, and one so far. So we do have a roam here coming through from the rest of Detonation. Focus me. Seros has pushed the tower down. That's two, one now up for DFM. And look at Bonson in the 
the top side as well, pushing down the top side. Yeah, he's 50 CS in the advantage. There is no way right now that you go anywhere near that Shyvana because it's just not worth it. She's going to ult away. She's going to run really quickly. She'll smite you so you do no damage. There's, this is the thing about challenging smite. It's just got so many things that make it good. It makes it a good offensive tool. It's a fantastic defensive tool. Really just does everything. And Yuta Pongo going back and spent, and a BF sword is his choice. So no QSS could have picked it up there with that goal, but going aggressive. And that could be maybe Bob Thurston for a bit of safety, but maybe even Infinity Edge for real deeps. Yeah, we'll have to see what it is. If, it's in the, if it is the Infinity Edge, I expect it to stop at the pickaxe and then go into Azil because there's no re point really grabbing an Infinity Edge without any other crit build up in your build at this point as a second item, but Bloodthirster makes a heck of a lot of sense. It gives you so much uh, lifesteal coming through in the item build. Is Reggie going to run into Bonzen? Bonzen not really bothered by him, but Renzi steals a Krog. You're going to have to be careful, buddy. Don't poke the dragon. Yeah, definitely don't poke the dragon. Giant's belt, double cloth armor, and the Merc Treads. Not that much AMR, but Reggie, yeah, I think immediately realizes the error of his ways. Yeah, exactly right. You just see how much damage Bonzen does. Still has the ult available. Reggie has double escape summoner spell, so not really in much danger. But it's going to be extremely hard to deal with. Actually, both of these champions right now. Bonzen's probably better off running past Reggie and just farming up the way. I think so too, but neither of them quite itemized yet for the situation. I guess Shivana is going to build into some magic resist soon, but seems to be finishing the Randuins first. Yeah, just go for the Randuins and pick up any form of... Uh, I, I, I like Locket at the moment if I'm going to go a solo. Uh, item, but Banshee's Veil also a s fantastic item coming through there. Even Spirit Visage, if you want to pick it up, if you're going for any lifesteal late game, it makes it a very attractive pickup as well for Shivana. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Spectre's Cal helps up so much in that matchup, so we'll see when that does come through for the Shivana. But this is exactly the game plan that we expected coming through from Detonation Focus Me. You look across that minimap, spread out wonderfully 1 3 1. Yeah, exactly right. All they're going to do is continue using the Corky to poke out lanes and I guess harass and be annoying as Utapon doing the exact same in top lane, just continuing. It's a frozen heart on Helio. He doesn't do much damage, but every third proc, you just see a little bit of a chunk go through. Yeah, KLG though, back on top of the dragon. Dead Nation focus me, not able to keep track of them here, and that's going to be two for one now, but they're going to take turrets instead. Helio are actually going to get his ult block there by Kazu. Tornado going to come through. Utapon chasing him, but they just want the tier two. Yeah, exactly right. And you know, KLG actually trading the dragon for the turret is in Dead Nation focus me's favor, because at the end of the day, this is still a double AD carry. Uh, composition and they're going to crush through structures so quickly they're actually committing to the top lane probably looking to trade an inhibitor turret for a mid lane tier two yeah i thought bonzen was gonna teleport but he actually goes top lane there kazu gonna get hooked up by bear though and seros taking up the tower unipod just working on it will take out the structure and klg a big misstep here might loosen the inhibitor but they are coming back in reggie ready to go helio though gonna get chunked out there reggie now gonna join in massive hemo play but unipon wants in he's gonna try and 1v1 on the Vladimir, tumbles out of the Arctic Assault, is going to keep going in, gets exhausted, but Bonzen's going to peel away, bang with a great condemn, now going to fire onto Julio Steedo, does get the kill, will go down, but the inhibs falling away, so what, Tedwani's forced to go back to a fountain, and a big win for Japan. And Siva, what are you doing? Zekro still trying to push out here, he's lost an inhibitor for two turrets in the mid lane, that was an absolute freakishly good call coming out of Detonation Focus Me. 22 minutes in, they take the top lane, in here, there's so much standing gold in the bottom lane, so it makes so much sense. They're 5,000 gold in the lead. That's just thrown the game into the wash. Yeah, and I said it before, in their losses, Detonation Focus Me still looked good around objectives, made very good rotations to sort of reduce the damage when they were behind. Unfortunately, they couldn't do it enough to pick up a win, but their objective players looked good when behind and when ahead looks even better. Yeah, exactly right. So they're able to make a really smart call. All of a sudden, there's a wave in the top lane that you can't ignore. You siege up with your Corky, who's now finished his haunting, guys. Just throw rockets at everyone. You leave Utapon in the bottom lane to split push. He's got double uh, lifesteal items now. Just everything falling together right now for detonation focus. It is, but I do have to ask you about the Corky spawn. You mentioned it that mid Corky does have quite a few options. We did expect the Trinity Force, but please tell me all about Haunting Guys. Yeah, so Haunting Guys is one of the items that Corky can pick up because he scales very well with magic penetration. That's why you see the boots. His spells are a lot of his damage, and then the one auto attack with the Sheen proc. So 
going for a little bit more of a poke orientated build. We actually saw this come out from Zhao Wei Zhao, I think the first time this season at least, where he goes for a build that has a Luden's Echo as well. If a Luden's Echo is thrown on top of this one, all of a sudden your, uh, your big one's almost doing true damage if the opposition hasn't picked up any magic resist, which hey, no one has right now. And then they have all of the additional, uh, I guess, splash damage coming out for some more wave clear. So it just augments all of Corky's kit. Yeah, and I love that you mentioned the lack of MR. No locket being looked at so far by KLG as far as early item builds go. And they've got two Frozen Hearts here, which makes a lot of sense against the Vayne, you'd have to think. But like you said, KLG, a team that wants to look for fights. Those two Frozen Hearts best went together, but Detonation Focus Me are never going to let that happen. Yeah, exactly right. And look, right now they're using, because they have no teleport available, the Rek'Sai as a split pusher. So has the ultimate can get to a tunnel, all of a sudden... Two turrets are going to fall in the bottom lane. Vayne joins up now. This might even turn into another quick fast push with the inhibitor under fire once again. This time not going to make the same mistake. Everyone backs away. Yep, KLG all hit those blue pills, but Seros has rotated in as well. This bottom inhibitor turret might not last long here, and they are going to get on top of it. Look at it getting chunked down. The Corky going to join in, and all of a sudden, an amazing rotation by Detonation. Focus Me might even get them another inhibitor. Yeah, it certainly looks like it's going to. They need to fight right now, KLG. Yep, KLG do want to fight. They're going to line it up. Bear going to run in. Astorore, the target, but he might just sacrifice himself. Kazu going to get knocked up there, and Julius Dieter coming in. Good two-man ulti, but Jaina will reset. Now Bonds going to dive into the back as well. Just going massive, ripping through with the damage in vain. Now free hitting onto single targets. Reggie, good Zonius there will keep him safe and Sion chasing away the vein who's forced to condemn. Kazu gonna get low there but the big one's coming in and Seros not mucking about with the damage. Yeah and it's one for one but once again they broke another section of the base. All Julio Cito he had to go back halfway through that fight because it was in uh, super creeps taking out his Nexus turrets. One of them fell while this was going on. 6,000 gold in the advantage of Detonation Focus Me, and they're picking up advantages everywhere. Yeah, Leandro's done now for Corky as well. Pickaxe there for Vayne, possibly working on a Last Whisper, just to laugh at all this armor being built up. And Silver Bolts, hey, doing a pretty good job already. Double Randuin's completed there for Bonson and Astorore as well. And we've talked about, even the Spectre's counter coming through for Shivana, along with that Ruby Crystal, gonna make fighting the Vlad if she gets into a split push with him again, even easier at this stage of the game. And KLG just too far behind in their game does not match up well at this point. Yeah, and once again, Pastry, I just want to bring it up. KLG beat Hard Random, who went on to beat the Chiefs and Besiktas. Now, all of a sudden, a team that is yet to pick up a win is absolutely dominating KLG. These wildcard regions are so close together in this tournament. They are, and it's been, again, two crazy days of play almost completed now. This is our second last game of the second day, and Dead Nation Focus Me needed to get things going. Would love to pick up a win here and get on the board and start building some of their momentum. And all of a sudden, we look to it tomorrow, and we're not too sure how the results are going to fall. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea. Throw my power rankings out, definitely. Thank you very much. <laughs> very much see ya that's the region by the way not me saying goodbye yeah. <laughs> but yeah everything is just yeah it's completely in the balance because these they're nuts japan they're the youngest league coming into this one the fact that they're even able to stand toe to toe with these guys is just so impressive i wanted to bring that up as well but it's not even just the you know maybe the skill matching up more evenly than we possibly would expect it's the strategy here it's so sound this game yeah it certainly is they know exactly what they want to do helio's under fire yeah helio has to run away will not pop the ulti but that inhibs now wide open and the rest of dfm just keeping klg at bay and that inhibs dead yeah but they have got the flank so they might be able to get in here Bonson, though, he's a pretty good bodyguard here for this vein. Just going to run him out. Now, Yudapongo going to go in onto the bear. Bear going to take too much damage. Flutters out of the queue. Great knock up there by Astorori and Zacro under attack. Will go down as Seros gets the kill. Yudapon still alive, but does finally go down. But the trade already in the advantage here of Detonation. Focus me. Reggie going to do it in the backside, but Shivana going to chase him away. And no more kills. A two for two trade, actually, as Reggie gets knocked up on the way out. But another inhibitor goes down. Yeah, another inhibitor goes down, this time on the bottom side of the map Baron a very real objective when you have a vein on your team not to mention Leandri's torment which is just so good against it they'll pick up their first dragon of the game need to be careful here Julio Stito is going for the flank teleport is available from Helio want to look for the steal it seems like but 
DFM will keep the jungler out there. They'll take it away, even up the dragon. Honestly, don't really need it. Just want to make sure KLG don't get it. Yeah, exactly right. So they're able to grab that one. It also delays the fifth dragon, whereas if this game somehow for a miracle continues to go on, is going to be a big objective for KLG to be able to secure. But now all of a sudden they have to send Sivir, who's probably the only person that can deal with a creep wave that be, honestly, into the bottom lane. They do have a top laner with uh, Teleport, but the danger is if Heliot ever has to use that one, the wave's just going to push in because he's not going to be able to shove it further, far enough out. And there's only one Nexus turret alive. One of them went down at like 22 minutes. Yeah, there's another inhibitor open in the top side as well. And Detonation focused me. Plenty of strong options now as well. Utapon hasn't quite finished the last Wispy yet. Actually behind in CS, but you can sort of see why given all the dueling and pushing he's been doing. Yeah, exactly right. And he's 5, 3, and 4 as well. Seven, uh, nine kill, kill participations. Wow, that was horrible. <laughs> to 2 is pretty much sitting pretty in terms of items. Although the Infinity Edge as well as Static Shiv means that if uh, Zekro gets some good crits at the start of the fight, he's going to be doing a lot of damage as well. But they have started up the Baron. They have indeed. They'll clear out the wards there as well. Bear trying to get to Mijin Kazu. That's a good hook target. Flayed back as well. Astorori they're going to join in. This Baron taking so low. Unipon wasn't even there. They actually do have to disengage as Helior will use his teleport. That is so many wards in the back but of Baron. look at where the creeps are. They're starting to fight. Yeah, they are going to fight in there, but DFM, all they have to buy time. Julius Dito dives onto the vein, but will go down. Helior getting low as Astoror is just dove in the back line. Reggie going to look to go down. Does pop the Zonias, but a one-for-one one trade. Now two-for-one. Creep wave pushing massively into the base, and the rest of KLG have to back away to defend. Yeah, just show me the base. The Nexus turret is going to fall down most likely and this is absolutely nightmare the base is broken there is nothing defending their nexus yeah, super creeps going in and dfm don't want the baron pushing up the top side instead gonna look to maybe finish the game yeah they're looking to get in there with a cute play oh my god you be careful yep. Dekro there getting good damage in. Kazu will be okay. DFM will just take the next inhib instead of Zyk. Zykro. It's a massive Q to the face there from Seros. Can't complete it yet. The death time is still too low, but that's two inhibs down and Baron now wide open. Yeah, and there is a cheeky ward in the base pastry time. And uh -oh. there is a down inhibitor. So for the next five minutes, no one can leave that base because of the ward. Because if any time... They extend too far out. Shivana's just going to run in and finish the game. Was trying to find a tunnel there as well. Not Nothing quite close enough, unfortunately, for Astorore. But again, Baron is now in their They're control. They're picking it as well. Wow. I wonder if Bonzen's going to go for it. Because honestly, I don't even know if they can kill him in time. As Astorore also taking out the jackpot of all jackpots yep. when it comes to wars. So much money. Actually has to back away. There's still two left that he hasn't cleared out yet, but this is a horrible choice for KLG. Stop the Baron and lose your base to a Shivana or stay in your base and lose the Baron. Neither option is good. Yeah, exactly right. And they've pushed out that far that I think at this point, Shivana can nearly even go for it because they can just stop Everything else probably won't die quick enough, but Reggie, he's under fire. He's been caught there by the Jana Bonzen on top of him. Now Saros going to join in. That's a dead blood. Yeah, all of a sudden, one member down. They can just take the Baron at will, or maybe they push in, try and end the game. They don't need the Baron, it looks like here. So strong are the members of Detonation. Focus me. Yudapong going to join back in. Now has his last whisper. Bonzen gets hooked, but he's just going to shrug that off. In fact, he's tanking Tarot Agro. Yeah, he doesn't really care at this point. He's absolutely massive. A three-item Shivana at only 30. One minutes in, they're looking to end. Bonzen gonna tank it up as well. Astorore actually gonna have those duties, and that's how it almost goes down. Zykro pops his ulti. Helio in the back there as well, but Sivan now a little too far forward. Wow. Massive cute uh, ulti there from the cork, and they'll dive in. Astorore will go down, but Detonation Focus Me actually do back away just a bit. Yeah, so they're able to pick up the jungler. That's huge coming through from KLG, so they'll stop the engage coming for now. And Inhib does respawn, but Detonation focused me. They're back on this Baron. Think this is a little bit of a brave call. They've got two smites. It's not that bad. Yeah. I mean, Vayne does plenty of damage. Seros is well going to chunk it out. This Baron will not last long, and it's going to be a fight between the Shivana and the uh, Sejuani. Shivana actually... Sej ugh. Shivana ahead in levels as Yudapon just wants the kill instead. Zones out Julius Dito and looks to get the kill, gets it. Yeah, able to pick up the kill in the end. So Baron will go down all of a sudden. Bottom lane, mid lane. Anywhere is really an objective for Detonation Focus Me to be able to get in here. They'll go back, spend up their gold. 8,000 in the lead. 
And this has been a really impressive performance. And look at Saros. He's got a Void Staff after that as well. Really wants to get those spells going. Yeah, he certainly does. Just wants as much penetration. Of course, Corky doesn't scale as well with AP, but Magic Pen, boy, is he beastly. Yeah, really strong. You saw the big ones in the earlier fight doing plenty of big AoE damage there. So I like what's going on here. Just one more inhibitor to break if they even need it, and the Baron buff makes him incredibly strong at this stage. Yes, yeah, certainly does. And, you know, maybe it's a miracle big five-man ult that will come through, but Reggie, he's been caught been again. Been caught again. Yes, yeah, Zeros now coming in. Look at that damage coming through. Cars are going to move in. Reggie will get out with the pull. Posse Lantern, but Sedwani going to take out a turret now as well somewhere in the map don't know where oh it's actually the mid lane that was prepped earlier minute him's gonna fall down as well bonson might launch himself in at a moment's notice and the very open inhibitor zykro defensively pops the ulti yeah certainly does they're going in yeah they try and find it get the stun but cure sets out and now astorora gonna dive into the team does take a little too much damage but bonson going in into the back massive damage following through reggie gonna get aggressive but unipon just does not care he's such a beast right now in the vein does get exhausted but bear goes down he'll chase them in a detonation focus me finally pick themselves up a win and they do it in an extremely convincing fashion without plays good shot calling and a huge lead at the end of the game what well played coming through there and they did it with the weirdest double ad slash ap corky i've ever seen yeah i mean saros's build uh curious i think for a lot of people they'll be checking the tapes for that one come the days but the japanese squad Pretty elated there, you have to think. Finally get themselves a win. You can see smiling and hugging each other there at the end. And we asked the question of Unipon, where is this big carry, this big duelist that we've seen him play so well locally and win the MVP in that season of the LJL? He arrived today. It wasn't the cleanest performance, but it was what we expected. And man, does he deliver. And it honestly looked like he was shaking off rust as he went. He got a good gank at the start. Then he had some faltering steps in the bottom lane when he was trying to duck and weave out. Then he solo killed out Zacro on Sivir. And from there, it just looked like he was back and able to weave in and out of the team fights on Vayne. Looked much more impressive than he had at the start of the uh, week. Yeah, I mean, given all the CC that he has to get out of, the Vladimir damage potentially coming through, the Thresh, the Sedwani, he drew through those last team fights and tumbled through just everything seamlessly. Yeah, he certainly did. It was a very impressive play coming through from the AD carry. But once again, in the mid lane, Siros has to be given huge props for this. He was up incredibly far in CS. Went Flask, which was a little bit curious at the start of the game. I think could have bullied even further with the Doran's Blade. But once he hit level 6, boy, was that lane over. Yeah, I mean, it, despite maybe the Void stuff that was... Cool looking stuff coming in there. I mean, Saras was great. I love the Leandries. He just played well. You saw in the team fights as well. Shivana diving in, Rexai diving in under them as well. And he was an AoE threat there in that team comp. Yeah, he certainly was. Curious build, but it was all about getting an early advantage in this game. And it led to this. We have a replay actually that we'll bring up of what exactly happened in the top lane. So before that, they traded uh, mid lane turret for the outer and then they continue to go so at this point KLG think we have the mid lane we have a better advantage but they're against a double ad comp so when we roll this one out you see that they actually just start ignoring helio because they have the teleport onto a creep and they just burst down the turret from there because at this point you're on an inhibitor everyone starts recalling but zeko in the mid lane chooses to stick around so then they lose the inhib but it gets even worse because then they start losing the fight after that because Unipon on the back line just free hitting everyone, dodging out from all of the CC. Shivana flies through and this situation went from being, oh, we might lose a turret trade in the mid lane to we have just thrown majority of that game away. From there, it was always going to be an uphill battle, but it was just really brave. But in the end, a fantastic strategical call. Yeah, and as I said, I've been very impressed with their strategic play all tournament long. And that game was probably the best showing of it. I mean, finally ending in a victory for them. They got an early lead, got, you know, more space to, I guess, open up a lead and really get ahead. And they got ahead in a very creative but very convincing fashion. Yeah, it certainly is. And, you know, League of Legends, a game of seconds. They did it again in the bottom lane when they were willing to risk being flanked by a heavy AOE CC comp to take out another inhibitor turret. And in the end, they ended up fighting. And even though they traded even in the fight, the super minions in the top wave took out the first Nexus turret. And that was a huge point in the game as well. All of a sudden, team fight not equal. You're losing structures 
because you're fighting. And from there, KLG knew that they just couldn't take the fight anymore. And you know what? Astorore's Rex in there as well has to be complimented in that game. Applied so much pressure. He's the perfect champion as well to having that sort of 1-3-1 one, one sort of comp. And we've seen Rex take takeover quite a few games today already. And that was another one to add to the tally. Yeah, it certainly is. Rex is really good for a couple of reasons. Has actually very good flank potential coming through the uh, pseudo global when you have tunnels set up is everything. But it's all about the knockup. You cannot dive champions with knockups because Merc treads don't help. Cleansing doesn't help. Mikhail's, you can throw that out the window. Knockups are really strong in anti dive compositions because they keep your carries safe. And you just saw that even when they were grouped as three, no one could engage on the Jana, Corky, Rexa. Yeah, and that was just great stuff to watch in all. We do have another replay ready there as well coming through. And again, I mean, we'll just see even earlier in the game now. Yeah, so this is where. You saw Utapon blowing off the rust. We mentioned it early. So the collapse comes through, and it's Utapon versus three people. They just dove uh, Zykoro in the top lane. They're about to pick up the turret. But as we roll this one out, you see that he understands how to play. He jukes to the side, then runs away from his turret, maybe pulls a trigger a little too early, and then tries to get on the opposite side of Yulio Sito to get him into the wall. Unfortunately, it didn't work. He had Astorore running down, and they do end up trading two for one in this with Corky coming down. But you can see exactly what he was trying to do in the duel. He has the correct mindset on how to play these AD carries. And look, ultimately, this could have been even better if an awesome play didn't come through from Bear. And that was any other champion, not Sion, who can die and still punch you lots. <laughs> you just understood that for what... Detonation Focus Me brought their whole strat together and played very well on the rip. Yeah, and you saw Ceres at the end of that clip as well. All of the damage from the Corky. I mean, we talk about Corky's damage as spells. He used to be a popular AD carry pick. Sort of dropped away, you have to think, with being a, like a big carry for his team is difficult as a single AD because of how big the tanks are. But as a mid lane threat, as a good early to mid game powerhouse, Looks great there in that comp and bridged out the game perfectly for the team. Yeah, certainly did. And look, Corky fell away because he hasn't got an attack speed, uh, steroid or something like that. And all of his abilities are magic damage. He still does a heck of a lot of damage. If you do build him as attack damage da carry, he has a good repositioning tool, but just didn't have that steroid to keep him going. So that's why he's fallen out of favor. But as a mid laner, he ticks all of the boxes. Good burst damage, poke damage, has a reliable escape to get out of it. Although you saw a beautiful interruption coming through from Yulio Stito. Uh, on that Valky Valkyrie. So, yeah, I think that he fits much better currently into the mid lane role, and he can punish some of these guys that we're seeing, the Karthuses, the Vlads. All of a sudden, Corky, he deals with them really well. Yeah, you know, more of a, a sustained damage champion. He just doesn't have the CC that we do sometimes see brought into the mid lane, but like we've been seeing a lot of, with Vlad probably being the best example, lots of CC in the top lane, especially from the jungle as well, with the likes of Gragas and Sejuani, and all of a sudden, people don't want CC in the mid lane anymore. They want damage, and Corky, consistent early games and big damage. Sign me up. Yeah, exactly right. And the other thing he does, forces people off turrets. We keep talking about it. Sieging with hyper carries is a nightmare. You get someone like Corky that forces people away from turrets, this time with poke damage, it's not a clear out like Gragas, but they're just very few and far between in the game of League of Legends. Corky's poke is AoE. He's kind of like what old Jace was. So he's able to be utilized in that fashion that you just throw two big ones out there and all of a sudden, no one can go near the turret anymore. You saw how much damage they were doing. Yeah, I mean... In the late game team fights, especially, people were clumping up because Sejuana was diving in and Sarah's was just firing rockets in the middle of them. I don't even think he used any other abilities. He didn't need them. Yeah, exactly right. You just sit there, you keep firing rockets. Yeah, we are going to go straight to an interview. Welcome, Sturkey, first of all. And you just won your first game. How do you feel about it? Uh, obviously, I'm so happy right now. And I'm glad that I, t I could take a first win. Yep. That's great. So. Vayne's a very risky pick in this meta. meta. Did you find, how did you find the confidence to pick her? Um, my, my team, whole team was uh, confident about uh, Utapon's Bane mechanics. So well, we, we just believed in him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's just. Your quirky pick was also very interesting. You made a counter pick, or was it a strategy before the game? Uh, the, Actually, we have been losing uh, last three games, so we want we wanted to change something. So we just picked our favorite champs. <laughs> so Koki is his favorite as well. So yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> so it worked really well. <laughs> is there anything you want to say to your fans, to your supporters, and to your country? Of course. Um, 
thanks to the sub sponsors and all the supports, and thanks to the, all the fans in Japan. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you for the interview. Now we're back to Zenit or no Kemal. And fun stuff there. Fun to hear him say that they wanted to play their favorite champions. I have to say, for five favorite champions, that was a pretty good team call. Yeah, it certainly was. It turned into a ridiculously good 1-3-1 one, one split push, and then the fast push came through as well. But this goes once again. Play your brand of League of Legends. Throw the meta out the window. If you are in a position where you think that you are better on X champion, even if it isn't there, that is what you should bring onto the Rift. Absolutely, and it's a great game there. Good to see them play for fun and a win finally for Detonation Focus Me. But don't go too far away. We'll turn after the break with the last game of day two of the International Wildcard Invitational.